Committee of House called to order. Colleagues, we are on Chapter 11. We will now proceed with the amendment introduced by Senator Clint Rigel, found on SB 276 CER L15116. The time on that was 940. Appropriation for enhanced monitoring of cannabis growers. Senator Clint, sir, your amendment. Yes, thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. So this amendment actually was originally intended to give funding to the Department of Agriculture for their Agriculture Development Services Division, uh, which would be the division that will be monitoring cannabis growers. Um, initially, they had asked for some funding so that they could purchase equipment. Uh, they need some vehicles for the division. My understanding right now is uh, the division chief uses his own vehicle. Um, other pieces of equipment here and there that they needed to enhance their monitoring of cannabis uh, growers. However, um, I just was informed uh, last evening that there also was a mix-up with their staffing pattern, not on the part of OFB, but a mix-up on the part of the Department of Agriculture wherein they had previously submitted an old staffing pattern that wasn't the correct staffing pattern. Upon reconciling their staffing patterns, they realized that they would be short for their staffing of their overall agency. So because of that, I'm going to, I've changed this amendment slightly from the initial amendment that was introduced. That's why we rescinded the uh, initial amendment and then changed this one just to add in the words and other agricultural programs under its purview. So the amendment now reads $400,000 is appropriated from the audited surplus revenues from the fund balance of fiscal year 2022 to the Department of Agriculture to carry out its mission for enhanced monitoring of cannabis growers and other agricultural programs under its purview. That way it just gives them the flexibility to use it to cover their staffing needs, again, due to the mix up with their staffing patterns to ensure that they're properly funded for their staffing for the entire agency. So you know, with that, I ask my colleagues for their support. Um, this uh, amendment is really necessary for them to be able to fully fund their operations and their staffing at this point. And if there's anything left over from it, then that could go towards the monitoring of cannabis. And of course, you know, overall, their staffing pattern also included uh, some members of the um, uh, uh, agriculture division, uh, agriculture development uh, services division. And uh, so that would also help out with uh, monitoring all of their agricultural programs, inclusive of cannabis. But really the focus now is gonna be more on actually their overall staffing. And hopefully it'll help a little bit in the monitoring of cannabis as well. So uh, with that, I just ask for my colleagues' support on, the, on this amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator, Senator Rigel. Does anyone like to comment to that yes, amendment? Uh, Sen uh, Vice Speaker, ma'am. Manana Sintos, Mr. Chair, thank you. Um, I just want to um, chime in for the record that I stand in support of this, and I, uh, of this amendment, and I um, appreciate the, the good author's um, explanation as it relates to the Department of Agriculture and the need for uh, supporting other uh, agriculture programs uh, under its purview. So uh, I hope my colleagues to, can support this amendment and uh, I stand and rise in full support of it. So, Sijos Masi. Any of my colleagues would like to uh, make comments to this amendment? There being none, Senator Clinton, would you like to close, please? Uh, no need to close. I just ask again uh, for my colleagues' support on the amendment. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Clinton. Are there any objections to this amendment? There being none, motion passed, amendment passes. We now proceed to your next amendment, Senator Clinton, the appropriation of the agriculture for the mobile slaughterhouse. It's on SB 276 CER L15, page 116. Senator Clint, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chair. This amendment would appropriate $600,000 from the audited surplus revenues from the fund balance of fiscal year 2022 
to the Department of Agriculture for the purchase of a mobile slaughterhouse. The funds provided herein are available up to the end of fiscal year 2023. So this um, amendment came about uh, because, um, as you're aware, I did previously introduce a bill to build a um, permanent stationary slaughterhouse, a brick and mortar slaughterhouse, if you will. Uh, unfortunately, that bill received some negative feedback from certain members of the community. It seemed to have too much opposition for one reason or another, which is a whole other story I don't want to get into. That's a very long story. Um, but ultimately, one of the other ideas proffered was an idea of a mobile slaughterhouse. Now, myself personally, I would rather see a permanent slaughterhouse, but we don't seem to be able to agree on where to site a permanent slaughterhouse, where to who's going to build it, how it's going to be done. Again, like I said, I had a bill that would have appropriated money to do that at a site that's already been previously determined by uh, a previous um, slaughterhouse uh, siting committee or whatever it was named, task force, whatever it was. And it's an in Guam law that identified a permanent site for a slaughterhouse, but there was too much pushback for one reason or another on that particular bill. So instead I'm thinking this is a a nice little compromise here where we can instead start with a mobile slaughterhouse. Uh, mobile slaughterhouse is much smaller, uh, much less impact to the environment since those were some concerns that were raised during the public hearing on the permanent slaughterhouse. Um, this is a, this mobile slaughterhouse is in essence like a big container um, that can be moved around on a trailer. Uh, the dimensions I believe are you know around 36 feet in length so it's shorter than a 40-foot container, right? And about eight feet wide, um, 11 feet tall. And this, I think, is a great start. And it would also be a way to sort of get into this idea of producing our own meat on island. Right now, we don't have a slaughterhouse. Saipan and Tinian have slaughterhouses. I just had meat from, Marian from the Marianas Islands. It's called Marianas Meat. Um, a couple months ago because a friend of mine brought it back from, uh, from the CNMI. And I'm sitting here eating this Mariana's meat just thinking, you know, why can't we do this here on Guam? And the answer is because we don't have a slaughterhouse. And there's various reasons why we don't have a slaughterhouse. Uh, I personally think it's because a lot of people are fighting over who's going to be the one to open the first big slaughterhouse on Guam. So I'm thinking, we start with a small mobile unit just to sort of get the wheels in motion, so to speak. Start with a small mobile unit that will then create uh, more demand for local meat if we start really small. And then eventually whoever opens a slaughterhouse, you know, so be it. Open a permanent one. But we can start with a small mobile one first just to get the industry going, just to get people to start raising livestock and then being able to butcher their meat in this mobile slaughter home and then being able to uh, sell that meat on the market. Now this mobile slaughterhouse would have to go through all the, uh, of course, USDA uh, um, approval process um, to ensure that it's up to USDA standards. Uh, that includes some extensive plans that they have to put out. I don't know all the details of that, but that's something that the Department of Agriculture can work on. Um, in addition to that, uh, this uh, mobile slaughterhouse would have to go through all the regular permitting uh, processes, inclusive of whatever permits are required from the Department of Public Health, uh, from the Guam Environmental Protection Agency, and any other pertinent uh, agencies that would have to sign off on this type of thing. Just like any business goes through, uh, or any sort of thing of this nature has to go through a permitting process whenever you build something or operate something. So. I think this is a great start um, to get the island of Guam into this mode of producing our own food. And again, as I said, we don't produce any of our own meat unless it's you know backyard meat that you can't sell legally uh, in any store or restaurant. And I think this is a great start. Uh, start small and then grow from there. And then hopefully this will develop more demand I see that uh, I can sort of envision that if this mobile slaughterhouse comes to fruition, then I believe we'll see ranchers and farmers start raising more livestock because they know that there's a place that they can have their livestock 
slaughtered uh, under a USDA approved mobile slaughterhouse so that they can then bring the meat to market and sell that meat. That will start creating a demand for the meat and uh, I think it'll start um, getting ranchers and farmers more interested in raising livestock and then we can start building that up and as, as the demand increases for that I think that opens the door for someone to be able to build a permanent brick and mortar slaughterhouse wherever that may be and whoever may come up with the funds to do that in the future. I think this is just a great starting point um, for the island of Guam. So with that I ask my colleagues uh, for their support on this amendment. Thank you Mr. Chair. Thank you Senator Clint. Um, before I ask any of my colleagues if they, they like to make any comments, there is an amendment that has been proffered by uh, by the speaker in reference to this amendment. I'd ask the speaker if she can go ahead and, uh, no, I, I, want, I want everyone else, I want the amendment to be introduced and the reason why, so that it doesn't neutralize anyone from speaking on the amendment. Because once you speak to it, you only get one shot. Okay? And, and the amendment is, is, I don't think it's, it's pretty much in order. Speaker, do you have, you have an amendment? Sure, but point of order, normally everyone's invited to speak on the bill yeah. and make an amendment while they're speaking on the bill. And there, that there's no other amendment. Nothing precludes them. There's no other amendment, Speaker. Senator Tatarigui, you want to speak first? Yes, Mr. Chair, and I, and I, I right. do have an, uh, an amendment as well. Uh, to you do? This. Yeah, and it's as simple as just um, as that uh, any unexpended or encumbered appropriation shall revert back to the G, uh, general fund on the last day of the fiscal year 2023. It's, it's on the amendment? Have you read it? It says here... The then funds must, here provided here are available up to the end of fis F fiscal year 2023? Okay, I have the wrong one. Okay. I don't have the right So, amendment. my colleagues, if you prefer to speak first, just understand that once you're done, we go to the amendment, we're pretty much at the tail end. Ma Madam Vice Speaker, do you have any comments you'd like to give to the Masi. amendment? Jesus Masi, Mr. Chair. Uh, yes, I do just have a very brief comment. And again, um, this amendment, I'd like to thank the good oversight chair uh, for proffering this amendment. Uh, I do want to note for the record that uh, as the retiring speaker spoke about um, how uh, uh, they've been trying to, to um, work on purchasing and placing this mobile slaughterhouse, um, we as uh, part of the uh, APIL and working together with our brothers and sisters from CNMI and knowing the successes they have there, uh, we were hoping that we could get ours launched sooner than later, but I'm hoping that, that with this uh, resources provided uh, that uh, we really could facilitate and complete this project. As you um, know, Mr. Chair, um, there have been great successes uh, uh, with the Mariana Islands, uh, our brothers and sisters in NMI, and, and uh, especially with Rhoda and Tinny. And so I just want to say that that uh, we got to complete what, what this August body has provided for, and it's taken a while, and with all the concerns out there, uh, this is one way to show that, that we want to implement and we want to make sure that this program becomes viable and we support the effort. So uh, I stand and rise in full support of this and, and know that we will be working with the Department of Agriculture to make sure that this gets facilitated right. So, Cesar Smasi, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Madam Vice Speaker. Does anyone else, Senator Tello, you wanted to finish off on your comments? Uh, Go ahead. Just make comments, yeah, to the, to the uh, amendment, Mr. Chair, um, since I, I have the old amendment that didn't incorporate it, so that, that's fine, I'm glad. And I just wanted to comment, and I appreciate that the uh, author of the amendment incorporated that, because you know, we talked about earlier, I think Mr. Chair, you even brought it up on one of the uh, amendments, you know, having money sitting there for a long period of time and nothing happened. You know, that's a, a, gonna be a big issue. You know, we all know that it's a lot harder not to give something out than to give something out and have to take it back. That's a lot harder. <laughs> So we want to make sure that, you know, they have a certain amount of time, a decent enough of time to, to create this, uh, the slaughterhouse. But 
um, well, actually here it's the mobile slaughterhouse. But we also know that if you, if you watch the public hearing, and I attended that public hearing, there, it was very um, controversial on this subject. Um, a lot of opinions, people who were in the industry um, who want something like this to happen, but there was just not enough guidelines to provide a win-win for everybody at this point. So I think it's gonna take some time. You know, we have to involve the federal government in, uh, with this as well. And it will take some time, but um, I think the intent of this legislation and, and the author who's been an advocate you know, for sustainability, um, which is an, an excellent topic that we should all continu continue to advocate for, even while he is serving his last term here, you know, won't be back, that we should, who's ever in the next term, carry that torch and continue to push that forward because it's one of the greatest things that he has, has uh, um, provided while he was sitting as a senator, pushing for sustainability for our island. And um, I thank him for that. And uh, the last thing I have to say is, we gotta be cautious moving forward on any more appropriations, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chair, we know we have the CRER report and it came to us adding additional funding um, in excess revenue. But we need to make sure that there is a cushion. We have to be fiscally responsible. I mean, after this point, anything else that comes forward could be saved until the next CRER report gets, comes to us. Put it in a bill form. Because right now, Mr. Chair, I am showing just on the additional funding that came in of excess revenue, We've already spent five point, with this amendment, $5.1 million already. And that's only going to leave us with $20 million left after this amendment is passed. $20 million. And I think $20 million is a good cushion to have to be safe because we do have two more uh, months to go. And we have to be very cautious that right now the special funds came in even higher than what was projected on shortfall. OFB said about five million, BBMR said seven, and it came in at 8.6. And it's anticipated to lose even more, go even into more of a shortfall in the next couple months. So we have to be very cautious, Mr. Chair. Right now we're clocking in at about 20 million after this amendment, so it's, we, we need to be very cautious. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Tidegui. Does anyone else like to speak to this amendment? Senator Brown. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I just want to know if the sponsor would yield to a question. Yes, if you can state your question. I just wanted to inquire. I mean, you know, we're very good at building things and we're very good at acquiring things. We're do we, we do an absolutely lousy job at maintaining it. So I just want to follow up because it's an appropriation to purchase the mobile slaughter uh, house, which I have no, I have no problem with. I, I also attended the public hearing and there's a lot of controversy, even among those in the industry of how to proceed with regards to this issue or even coming to consensus and how they're going to move forward. Uh, but that's, that's not uncommon. You have a lot of very strong-willed, opinionated people. You're not always going to get consensus. But I just want to know who is going to operate and who's going to maintain this asset because that's, that's always the problem, especially equipment uh, of this nature that, you know, it's probably be the only one on Guam like this. Uh, how, how is the maintenance going to be addressed and who's going to actually operate it? Who's going to, who's going to staff it and maintain it or you know, take it around to different locations on the island. Has that been explored and has that been defined at this point? Senator Clint? Yes, uh, thank you for that question. Yeah, absolutely, it's going to have to be, um, the operations of it uh, are gonna have to be outsourced somehow through some sort of procurement process. Um, Department of Agriculture is already working on something to that effect. Uh, this was the slaughterhouse that they were already trying to purchase First, uh, they were hoping to get um, ARP or one of the federal funds to, I forget which one, to purchase it. They didn't get it. They also, my understanding, has applied for a grant to try to purchase it, and they were unsuccessful in their attempt to obtain a grant to purchase it. So it's something that's been in the works already, and their plan, according to the director, is to outsource the operations of it 
through some form of procurement. Well, certainly look forward to that again. That's just the main concern. I mean, I understand the, the need for this. And like I said, I hope those that are interested uh, in pursuing this come to some sense of consensus because it's also like, you know, the farmers co-op. I've dealt with the farmers also and you have very strong-willed people uh, that have very different perspectives on how to operate and manage and ultimately there has to be some consensus on how we move so forward. So those in our community, they have an interest in, in wanting to have uh, the use of this uh, mobile facility will be able to have that consistency in delivery and, and the maintenance. Of course, the maintenance is very important. And then also just to make sure there's some consistency with regards to delivery of service. I think that's ultimately what we want to see. But thank you, and thank you to the sponsor for responding to my questions. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Thank Chair. you, Senator Brown. Sorry, Senator Mr. Adam? Chair. Could yes. I also uh, add to my response as well? To, yes, uh, please. To uh, Senator Brown. Just, I forgot to add something else in for context is I do think that they're looking at partnering with some sort of nonprofit organization, perhaps the farmer's co-op or someone along those lines. I don't know the details of it, but I certainly do support them uh, partnering with some nonprofit organization for the um, operation of it. Um, I, if it's up to me, just give it to the farmer's co-op, let them run it. But you know, I'm gonna leave that up to the Department of Agriculture to figure out the proper way to put out an invitation for bid or whatever is the proper way to do it. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. All right, thank you. Senator Ada, you have any uh, comments uh, thank, to the Thank amendment? you, Mr. Chair. Yes, I do. Uh, if the, you know, um, I wholeheartedly agree with the, the author of the amendment uh, when he first uh, mentioned about the brick and mortar for a slaughterhouse. And my concern is on, a, on anything portable, anything mobile, the, as the previous uh, speaker has said, the maintenance of these things. I mean, if we're going to be investing $600,000 into a mobile slaughterhouse, I think it needs to be said or included that a maintenance program comes with this type of uh, equipment. Because just like everything else, I mean, we were just standing outside looking across at the Guam Museum and the maintenance of the building, you know, it's just... There was, there's completely no maintenance going on on the exterior of that building. So a brick and mortar facility that can't get the proper maintenance to, to uh, attract folks to come into the museum, it, portable or mobile facility would be even worse because how many drivers would be driving that truck how many individuals will be going in and out of that vehicle just to, into the, uh, into the, uh, the trailer? I mean, it, it, it just really comes down to, to maintenance and to, to invest $600,000 into a mobile facility. I prefer to see $600,000 go into a brick and mortar and then we try to figure out what else we're going to do. I mean, it, if anything, if it doesn't pan out, it can be, become a another office or something, but at least it's something permanent that we just don't see $600,000 going down the, the drain. So at this point, I'm not, a, I, I'm not in an objection to the amendment. I'll just hear what the other, uh, what the amendment to the amendment will, will bring and then get with the author. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator. Does anyone else like to comment? You wanna comment on the amendment, ma'am, or your amendment? Yeah, on the amendment before us, yes. You're going to do the amendment? Okay. So, thank you, Mr. Chair. And, um, yeah, I also support a slaughterhouse for Guam, and I support uh, putting some of this money towards subsidizing this industry to get it started. Uh, there have been many legislatures before us who have tried this and put efforts in, dedicated land, um, different types of things, directed the Department of Agriculture to pursue this. And we know there, there have been objections by the community to the establishment of different slaughterhouses in particular areas. So we did have a hearing on one of the bills that was discussed earlier, and that's, those are the concerns. The area designated by prior legislatures for the permanent slaughterhouse has actually now been surrounded by residential subdivision or planned subdivision. And so while we're having a housing shortage, 
you know, it's very, those concerns are very valid. It's also, you know, a concern, even for a permanent slaughterhouse, the impacts of, um, you know, the infrastructure that must be built, the rules and regulations that must be followed in order to protect our aquifer. There was a, Dr. Jensen from Marine Lab, or yeah, Weary, sorry, also testified that the slaughterhouse waste runoff was the equivalent of sewer. It's the same thing, according to him, and that we should be concerned about that, of course, and very much concerned about that over the aquifer. So while I want to support a slaughterhouse, I'm, I'm very, very concerned based on the testimony that we've received on a permanent slaughterhouse on, on putting this money towards a mobile slaughterhouse. A mobile slaughterhouse is pretty much sounds like gets to go to any farm, any, how, you know, any area where they have um, a livestock right now and, and do their thing. I can't see how the concerns of a permanent slaughterhouse would not follow that mobile slaughterhouse into every neighborhood, everywhere. And that, that mobile slaughterhouse would be able to operate according, I mean, there's no parameters right now. And, and so without any additional protections for our aquifer. And while I, I imagine that Department of Ag will try to establish a safe mobile slaughterhouse that will protect our aquifer, I cannot imagine doing that adequately in a mobile facility. I mean, I'm expecting, look at what they require you know, us to do you know, for, other, for other things. And a lot of it is collecting the waste in permanent catchment systems and and directing them towards the sewer or other places. But um, so, so those are my concern. And um, I think with the rain that we just saw, even just yesterday and this morning, the flooding that just occurs on Guam immediately when it rains this hard, you know, we're always concerned when the floods come, and that's just with the rain, that we are transferring contamination from one area to the next from our neighbors to you know our neighbors and uh and i i just i this mobile facility um worries me for that it's i think um uh we would you know of course we would need i don't know if this authorizes one without any further you know uh, legislative authority or legislative parameters and whether the Department of Ag is going to set up parameters but um, um, I guess I would just suggest that we should limit this now until we know the parameters of a mobile slaughterhouse before we inadvertently authorize one in your neighborhood you know in Timoning, Derido, Jigo, until we know the parameters. So my amendment, I, I would like to propose an amendment to the bill. And I, and I do know that there is a group, like a, a livestock cooperation, maybe others. I think there was a private uh, company that tried to establish a, slaughter, a slaughterhouse as well. And, uh, but so there's, there, have been, there are many people uh, interested, but I would like to suggest that the money go towards a slaughterhouse that we do not specify a mobile slaughterhouse house and that way that they continue to work on federal funding that has been pursued for a slaughterhouse uh, and and other funding and that we establish a real slaughterhouse and we grow this industry um, the way it was envisioned many years before us so my amendment mr. chair is to strike the words the purchase of a mobile so that it will then read for a slaughterhouse. That's the Ma amendment, Ma Mr. Madam Chair, proposing. Madam Speaker, um, on your amendment, I think it was before the revised amendment, identify the funds provided here and are available up to the end of fiscal year 2023. Did you want to include that in your amendment? So that it, it, it earmarks specifically FY23. In other words, if, the, if, if it was to pass to be a permanent, 
that the money's got to be used for that during this FY23, not, not stretch it out for another two, three years, and I'm not going where it intended. And I think that's what that was asked by. I just wanted to make sure that if you wanted to include it or you wanted to strike that out. Uh, I'm, I'm not affecting that language. I'm seeing it only now. Was this submitted prior to beginning this chapter? Because I'm working on the version that was submitted prior to beginning of the chapter. Speaker, the funds provided here. That's why Senator Tidegree brought up the issue that she didn't yeah. see it. I'm just asking you if you wanted to make sure it no, stays No, my amendment there. does not affect that sentence. Okay. Here does anyone like to speak to that amendment? Senator Clint? Okay. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, I would have no problem with the amendment if it still enables a mobile so in other words if the amendment is such that it's you know to purchase a slaughterhouse mobile or otherwise so if they don't do the mobile they can do the permanent one or if not the permanent one i just want the flexibility that if nothing is ready for a permanent slaughterhouse by the end of fy 2023 that they can go ahead and purchase a mobile one so my question for the uh proffer of the amendment is uh, the way it's worded, do you mean for it to allow either or, or is your intention just to allow only a brick and mortar slaughterhouse? I, Madam, Madam I'm not, speaker? by my amendment, yes, I'm removing the mobile, so I'm removing the restriction that it only be used on a mobile and allowing that it be used on any type of slaughterhouse, actually, but I'm hoping that it also removes any inadvertent legislative authority for a mobile that, that we don't have right now. Does that suffice, Senator Clint? Uh, yes, as long as um, it allows uh, any type of slaughterhouse, mobile or permanent, I'm for it. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Senator Duenas, do you have any questions, comments for the amendment? Excuse me, Masi, Mr. Chairman. And I, I do um, share the concerns of the, of the speaker and the proffer of this amendment. Um, I have discussed with a, at least a few farmers and um, you know they really want the emphasis to be on a permanent slaughterhouse and 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 the thing is is that the idea of a mobile slaughterhouse I, I just don't think it's been vetted in terms of kind of seeing the extent at which it would operate and how it would operate and under what regulatory processes of course when you have a permanent structure of you know all that's going to have to be built in but I do think, though, as well, if this flexibility is here, you know, maybe that's what facilitates it. And, and maybe that's what facilitates it going forward. Because I would think that for something to be mobile, it would still have to have some sort of regulatory guidelines to contain, to process. And then, Mr. Chairman, also, you think of the mobile slaughterhouse and what where does the end product end up, right? Uh, you're still going to probably have some sort of uh, warehousing, cold storage, other things that are associated with the finished product or whatever, you know, comes out, uh, uh, results in, you know, the, 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 finished, or the finished or even unfinished prod product, right? You know, many of us know that um, we go to our favorite distributors or even uh, if we have a party, you know, to get us uh, a babui on base, you know, that's all crunched down into a box that we, the letson that we prepare. And uh, of course that's processed as a, a you know, a, a commodity to be used for, you know, for roasting and for, you know, fandangus and parties and things like that. Um, but, you know, we don't know to what extent, you know, uh, we end up with finished products. I think there's a lot of uncertainty with regard to that. And I think as we vet and, and try to push forward on the slaughterhouse and work through the differences that some of my colleagues have expressed as well that do exist, I think the final commitment to something like this is, is really well served by a permanent structure. And I also think that you know this i look at this almost as an opportunity for seed money as well because i think that a public private partnership is really the only way something like this is going to work the government has a stake you know the government has a commitment a private developers you know that would develop something like this will say okay i'm willing to there's buy-in from the government there's buy-in from you know the island to 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 really make a go 
at producing, you know, the capability of, of the end product of, you know, these proteins and these things that would end up becoming the, the product. So um, perhaps if that flexibility exists, but I really think that uh, the commitment should go towards the permanent structure for all the reasons. I may be convinced later on. I mean, I, I haven't had a chance to go online and see some other jurisdictions that do this, um, you know, on a mobile basis. But, um, but those are my concerns, and I do support this amendment to the amendments. I just want to say, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Senator Brown, on the amendment. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. The more this discussion goes on, the more I seem to realize that we really don't have a defined end product here. I mean, we all want to see this. This issue has been going on for many years of wanting to build a slaughter facility, and we've known for years the property up in GGO has been set aside for this. But the more discussion goes on, uh, we have not even defined whether or not, and I don't want to see the government of Guam in the, in the business of running a slaughterhouse. I mean, there's so much we're already mandated to do, we do so poorly. I understand there's interest out there in doing it, but I also understand having attended that public hearing and knowing some of those individuals that were there that I've had the opportunity to work with. Um, there's no consensus that gives me a clear sense of comfort that we're going to take $600,000 out of the budget and just say, oh, okay, well, and I appreciate the initiative of Senator uh, Clinton wanting to do the mobile slaughterhouse and even the speaker because, they, well, this is a need in the community. But I'll tell you, we're giving $600,000 and we don't even know how they're going to use it, what they're going to use it on. $600,000 is not going to build an adequate facility. Who's going to run it? Who's going to maintain it? Who's going to pay for it? Who's going to address the sanitation of it? Who's going to address disposal of it? Those are a whole lot of questions that we have no answers to. So I think it probably might be better to, to have agriculture, whoever, come up with a plan of something that they can get a majority, can, they're never going to get everybody, at least a majority consensus of, because we can't either select which nonprofit or which business from the legislature is going to run or operate. Those, proper, those things should go through proper procurement. We shouldn't be sitting here, hey, there's my favorite nonprofit, my cousin, hey, now I'm going to have you work on this. I mean, there's so much more involved in this process than what we would, you know, what we can even begin to address here. So, so now I have reservations for both. I would rather see if Department of Agriculture is going to be tasked to come forth with a defined plan and then, you know, advertise it out or whatever. If the government's going to say, hey, we're going to provide the, the property, we're going to provide a facility, you know, and then we're bidding it out for nonprofits or whoever business interests to operate it that takes on the responsibility, then fine. But I don't get the impression we have any of those details. And money right now, where everybody, you know, it's raining from the sky in droves, deluge of money, like the rain yesterday and this morning. But we know this is all going to dry up shortly, people. And, you know, we can't trip over ourselves. And I can talk because I just asked for several hundred thousand dollars only to ensure accountability of how money is spent. I'm not putting my favorite project up here that I want to give me millions today so that I can advertise, you know, do my commercial. Because I think I could articulate quite well on my commercial all the great things I've done. Please vote for me. Uh, when, you know, we're, at the end we're short, you know, we're, we're not giving our people ultimately a long-term benefit. It's a short-term solution so that we can take credit for it. And I just don't see in this issue now as the discussion goes, not that I thought about it this morning about a slaughterhouse, but as this discussion goes on, I just think there's, there's a need for more information, something a little more concrete and defined. Uh, and if there's interest out in the community, if they really want it, then they're going to come to some consensus. Because if they, they want the support of the government, then show us something that's more concrete that we can invest in. Uh, and have some confidence with regards to public funds, because this is a lot of money. I don't got no $600,000. I'd have to sell my house plus. Uh, so I think we just need to be mindful of that uh, and get something more concrete and more defined before we put the money up. No, what is it that we're investing? We have the same thing with the gas pulveri uh, the glass pulverizer. The legislature funded many, many years ago, even before my time, and it sat up at the landfill or the dump at the time in Ordot, and it deteriorated. Even though everyone goes, oh, we should pulverize it, we can put it in asphalt, we can you know, reduce the waste stream. And where did it go? There was no defined plan who was going to operate it, more importantly, who was going to maintain it. And it just deteriorated, probably is sitting at the bottom of the, the ORDOT dump right now. So I just think we need to be mindful and cautious and, and have more defined plans moving forward. Thank you, Mr. Chair, for the opportunity to comment. Thank you, Senator Brown. Is that, that, that's, not, that's not an objection, right? That's just an observation. Okay. All right, thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Torres, comment to the amendment? 
Yes, I, uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. I just wanted to ask the, the proffer of the original amendment um, for some clarification, because there's a lot of discussion about the mobile slaughterhouse and, and discussion about the uncertainty of it, you know, what it is, how it's regulated. Um, but, Sen but we're on the amendment now, so I, we, we okay. can come back to you. No, comment. no, no, I, but it has to do with the amendment. Oh, okay, it has to do okay with the then. Amendment. So I just want to ask the question. Um, I understand, or I, I was made to understand that slaughterhouses are not something new, that there actually is, a mo I mean, mobile slaughterhouses, that there actually is a mobile slaughterhouse program that is recognized by the U.S. Department of Agriculture that uh, falls under certain regulatory things. Cause, so can he, can he just um, mention that for me or discuss that a little? Because it, it seems that, that there's a lot of discussion about the uncertainty, but, but I think that there's some relevance. I just want to establish that there is some relevance to the mobile slaughterhouse program uh, as used not only, I mean, in, in other jurisdictions and, and um, that is sanctioned by the U.S. Department of Agriculture. So if, if he can so yield to that, can you just put yes. some, some clarity to whether this is an unknown or whether this is actually a, an established and working type of scenario with regard to mobile slaughterhouses? Yes, ma'am. Senator Clinton, do you yield to the question? Yes, absolutely. Um, so yeah, this is actually an idea that's been brought up by USDA officials here on Guam when I met with them. So I met with uh, some of the USDA officials on Guam. By the way, that was a whole nother misnomer that was circulating throughout the public, even amongst some of these very experienced members of the agricultural community. I kept hearing that we don't have any USDA inspectors on Guam for a slaughterhouse, which is false. I called USDA, had my staff call them and ask, is there a USDA inspector so we can figure out what needs to be done to uh, open the slaughterhouse? And I was told, yeah, we're the USDA. I met two of them. They're like, we're the USDA inspectors. I asked them, do you charge anything? Because that's another thing I was told. Oh, we have to pay for the USDA inspectors. They said, no, we're here to inspect. The feds pay us to come out here and inspect. They even send a guy, they, they send them to Saipan and Tinian to inspect their slaughterhouse. And they basically told me, we're just waiting on you guys on Guam to come up with a slaughterhouse, whoever's going to do it, whether it's private, public, or public-private. They're just sitting around twiddling their thumbs waiting for us to open a slaughterhouse. Um, well, they do other things aside from that. They actually inspect the other meat that's processed. Uh, for example, any butchering uh, uh, places on Guam that butcher meat that's already sent in here, they inspect that. Um, but they were more than happy to inspect a slaughterhouse and they um, are one of the ones who told me that perhaps a mobile slaughterhouse would be easier to get off the ground and start because it's less costly. It's not as expensive as a brick and mortar. And they absolutely said they have a program uh, wherein they, um, they uh, permit these things. They, of course, have to inspect it. They have to review. Um, there's a bunch of uh, paperwork, <laughs> obviously. There's a, there's a whole plan you have to submit on how you're going to uh, conduct the operations of the slaughterhouse before the USDA will even sign off on it. The, US, the USDA will not approve it until you've gone through a rigorous approval process, which is also one of the stumbling blocks to people entering uh, the market and building a slaughterhouse of their own is that um, you do have to know what you're doing and you do have to go through a rigorous uh, approval process before the USDA will even approve of your slaughterhouse, whether it's brick and mortar or mobile. But it was USDA officials that I met with who told me that um, they said maybe a mobile slaughterhouse would be easier to do because it's less costly, it's smaller, it's a smaller footprint. You've got less stuff to worry about. It's a smaller area to inspect, not like a big warehouse. Um, it's a much easier uh, process, um, uh, I guess, to get off the ground. So they pitched that idea to me as one of the potential solutions. They said, you know, they thought a mobile slaughterhouse would be a great idea for a place like Guam that's just starting out um, because we don't have an established livestock industry or meat industry yet. Uh, they did mention that I believe there are some mobile slaughterhouses currently in operations in Hawaii. Um, 
you know, they told me about how they don't see why CNMI can have slaughterhouses and we can't. I mean, they did that after I prompted them with questions. I said, you know, why does the CNMI have it and we don't? And they're like, we don't know. We're just waiting for someone here to do one. And we'll inspect it. And if it meets all the parameters and if they fill out all the proper paperwork and uh, it meets all the plan requirements that we're requiring, then we'll approve it as long as it meets all these requirements. Um, they're just waiting on us. They're just waiting for someone on Guam to open a slaughterhouse, whether it's mobile or brick and mortar. But they did say that um, they have approved USDA mobile slaughterhouses in Hawaii currently. Uh, thank you uh, for the question. Thank you, Senators. I, thank you very much for that clarification. Um, I, I have no further comments. Thank you. Does any one else like to comment to the amendment to the amendment before I ask the sponsor to close? None? Madam Speaker? I'll wait for close. Okay. Okay. Um, are there any objections to the amendment, Prophet? No objection to this. You have an objection, right? There is one objection. All in favor, please raise your hand so we can do a count. One, two. Okay, let, let me slow it down then. Raise your hand. There's an objection to the amendment to the amendment. Raise your hand in favor of the amendment to the amendment. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Amendment passes. Now back to the amendment as amended. Does anyone like to speak to that? And there's still an objection to that amendment. Senator Blouse, you, you want to speak? Sure. Thank you, Mr. Chair. And, uh, and I've been listening to uh, a lot of, of what uh, had been had to say about this. And I remember also, I, mean, I, I applaud the good author of the amendment and his passion for being able to do this. I agree with him that we need a slaughterhouse, okay? And, um, you know, we need things to, to, to get moving, you know, to build. I want, this is something that has been discussed for decades. Uh, but as also as was been brought up by colleagues is that while this body continues, unfortunately the powers that be that we, we provide the resources to don't do anything or it, it gets stuck. Um, and, you know, I just like the author of this would like to be able to have fresh beef, fresh meat um, in, in a facility, albeit now, I mean now a brick and mortar facility, but my concern with this is that it's, I don't know if it's for lack of a better term, it's putting the cart before the horse or the cart before the cow okay and, you know it's not one of those things if you build it they will come um, I guess my comfort would be more so if there was a concrete plan to be able to do this and use this at the same time, I can see where, where the author, you know, trying to move it again. And maybe having the funding available there, you know, would, would, would probably um, spark the interest. And I guess, I don't know, I'm not comfortable with the Department of Agriculture getting this money. Um, because they haven't moved on it. They haven't moved on a lot of stuff. Um, you know, and, and I'm not going to lay blame on any one particular person or group of people. It's just... 
I'll sit here and I'll listen a little bit more to conversations or to, to what may else be said about the amendment. I'd love to be able to support it. I just need a little bit more convincing to do so. Okay. So um, thank you, Mr. Chair. I appreciate, again, the author's continued push for this. Um, and I applaud him for that. I applaud him for that. I just hope that the industry itself and the agencies that are responsible, that are going to take charge of this, you know, had the same passion as he did, as he does with it. That would convince me even more for this. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you, Senator Brown. Senator Duane, would you like to comment to the amendment as amended? Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, I just wanted to offer this because I do share the concerns also that are brought up about, you know, set asides of the revenue and the like. The, the thing that, that my comfort level existed, and particularly with the amended version, was that there was also added language that the money would re be reverted to the general fund, which basically means you don't move on it, that funds won't be expended. There, it's very clear that for this to go forward, there was going to have to be a procurement process that should vet whether or not agriculture has got its ducks in a row to put out a proper procurement to move this forward. If not, the money goes back to the general fund. I think that's a fail safe at this point. I, I really do believe, though, that the opportunity to have revenue available, $600,000, Mr. Chairman, is not going to build a slaughterhouse. It's not, it's not gonna, it's not gonna you know, have a finished product to it, but it at least is a commitment to see if that could be the catalyst to strike you know, the energy and get it going. Uh, and if not, the money goes back to the general fund. That, that is my comfort level. I don't think this will give authority uh, for agriculture to use this money for any other purpose. Uh, it's very clear, it's for one purpose. And it does revert to the general fund if not if not expended for that purpose. So with that reasoning, Mr. Chairman, I continue to support the amendment. Thank you, Senator Duenas. Does anyone else like to speak to the amended amendment as amended? None? Or Senator Paris. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So, um, yeah, if the sponsor of the amendment can talk about the permits that are going to be required uh, for implementation of a slaughterhouse so that's a question. That's a question. Senator Clinton, do you yield to the question? Sure, absolutely. Uh, of course, it would first have to go through the USDA permitting process uh, to approve it as a USDA-approved uh, facility. And it, of course, would have to go through all the um, regular permitting processes by Department of Public Health and, of course, Guam EPA. Uh, and any other pertinent agencies, you know, um, but those are the main ones I envision that uh, would be required uh, just automatically um, by virtue of current statutes that require, current Guam laws that require facilities like this, you know, any kind of uh, facility dealing with food um, has to be um, permitted by Department of Public Health. So if this is going to be sold as food, obviously it would have to be permitted by Department of Public Health. And of course, um, any kind of facility that has any impacts to the environment would have to meet uh, the muster of the Guam Environmental Protection Agency. Senator Perez, does that suffice? Yes, that, that does suffice. So um, yeah, that's something I'm concerned about, you know, as we're moving towards food security, that we also balance the needs of protecting our environment and so it's good to hear that the regulatory agencies are going to be overseeing this uh, before its implementation and, and also uh, upon its uh, operation. So thank you. Thank you, Senator Paris. Does anyone else like to comment on the amendment as amended? There is an objection. So all in favor, please raise your hand. Oh, wait. You'd like to close on your, on your, on your amendment, Senator Clinton? Thank you, Mr. Chair. You know, again, um, I ask my colleagues for their support. Um, you know, I think this is a good start 
uh, as one of the uh, previous uh, speakers, one of my colleagues was mentioning that you know, that is part of the intention behind it, sort of just get the ball rolling and giving them the money and hoping that will kickstart this whole thing. Um, whether it goes towards a mobile or whether they find a better way to use this as seed money to a brick and mortar slaughterhouse, I'm all for either one. Again, uh, I introduced a bill for the brick and mortar slaughterhouse, but there are too many issues with that bill. So however they can figure out how to do it, and then with the timeline on it, they only have a year to figure it out. If they don't, then the, as one of my other colleagues said uh, off uh, camera, if you snooze, you lose. So, <laughs> and I agree. Uh, I want them to get started on this as quick as possible. Um, they're going to have to go through the USDA permitting process, which is you know, quite extensive. Uh, in fact, that's why the USDA is well recognized across the globe as sort of the premier um, food uh, government uh, regulatory agency globally. That's why across the world people say USDA grade A beef, right? Um, just getting that USDA stamp of approval on it because of the USDA's uh, stringent requirements uh, when the U.S. went through major uh, rehaul and revamp of their food system many years ago um, uh, to ensure this food safety, um, the USDA has created a, a stellar name for itself. Again, like I said, globally. Um, you ask anyone in any other country, they trust USDA meat. And there's a reason for that. And the reason why they trust that USDA stamp of approval is because the USDA has come a long way in putting in safeguards and putting in so many regulatory um, functions to ensure that the meat is safe. And they did this a long time ago in the U.S. because back in the old days in the U.S., they had lots of problems with tainted meat and lots of problems with food poisoning. It got to the point where the, the people of the U.S. demanded safer meat. And that's why they stood up a very strong uh, USDA agency. Um, a big part of why they put in a lot of these stringent requirements when it comes to uh, processing of food and particularly processing of meat. So the USDA will be overseeing this. They have to approve of this slaughterhouse before it goes through. Um, uh, in addition to that, of course, the slaughterhouse will have to uh, meet all the regulatory requirements of the Department of Public Health because they will be processing meat um, and they'll also have to meet whatever requirements of the uh, U Guam Environmental Protection Agency. So I think that this is a good way to start. Uh, it's starting small if they're able to do a mobile one or if they're able to get a, a brick and mortar one by all means I'm all for it. Uh, I started out wanting the brick and mortar, but a lot of people were telling me that maybe that's too ambitious. Go with a smaller one, start small first. And that's why I introduced it originally to be meant for a mobile slaughterhouse, but I appreciate the amendment uh, by my colleague to give it that leeway to be used either for mobile or for a brick and mortar slaughterhouse. And you know, again, ultimately, I wanna be able to eat a burger from Guam from meat grown on Guam, <laughs> you know, uh, or, you know, even a hot dog, sausages. I've spoken to people that uh, are currently producing sausages on Guam, and, uh, you know, the guy over at uh, Carabao Brewing, sorry to I didn't mean to give a advertisement there, but <laughs> I'm just being honest. The owner of Carabao Brewing, he, he, uh, he makes sausages, he makes all kinds of meat, and he says he would love to have a slaughterhouse here, even a mobile one, just so he can purchase local meat and be able to produce some sausages and other types of uh, cured meat uh, and sell it in his, uh, his business. But right now, he has no choice but to buy whatever meat is imported. And again, we've seen the problems with imports. We've seen the shelves go really thin. If you go shopping now, you'll see there's so many items missing from the shelves. We are just one global disaster or global war away from having the shipping lanes cut off and we will run out of food. It's time for us to start producing our own food. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I ask my colleagues for their support. Thank you, Senator Clinton. Colleagues, there is an objection. All in favor, please raise your hand in support of the amendment as amended. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 
Amendment passes. Thank you. Thank oh, you. Sorry. We will now proceed on to the, the next amendment proffered by um, Speaker, uh, Sen Correction, Senator um, Nelson. Mr. Chair, point of order, Mr. Chair, point yes, of order. Yes, go ahead, go ahead. Mr. Chair, this amendment, as we stated in the rules of engagement during this session, that you had to have your amendments in before the chapter is called upon. That was the rule of engagement. And we've kept that. We're almost on the last chapter. Yes. Okay, now this amendment here was just placed in from a, prior, from a previous or a chapter that's before this, now placed into this chapter. Now I can understand if a senator who's a first term senator knows better and not put it in the wrong chapter. But this be nice, amendment senator, here. Be, be nice in your comments, please. I You're am. Me. I, 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 would give, I would give the be benefit nice. of the doubt, Mr. Chair, All right. if it was a first term senator. That's what I'm saying. But this is not. We've been sitting here in this ledger. I've been here every single day to make sure that everything is adhered to and the rules of engagement are adhered to. And right now, we've got two amendments that we're taking out from another chapter that's going to be heard later on and placed in here. It did not meet the deadline, Mr. Chair. And this is very unfair. Senator Tidegui? This is unlike you, Mr. Chair, to be, you know, you've, you've been okay. running this, as well as Senator Rigel, who's been sitting at that table and making sure everything is, is in order. Now you're bending the rules. For who, Mr. Chair? Senator. You're bending the rules. This is an objection to have these amendments Thank come you. on. Thank you Thank for you, your Mr. objection. Chair. My colleagues, let me, let, let me remind you of what I stated earlier. As we were looking at all the amendments, the amendments that are pending for the remainder of Chapter 11 and, and Chapter 12, as we were scrubbing it, we found that some of the amendments we're in the wrong chapter. And I ask that it be, it be proffered and placed on the right chapter. That's Point of why information, Mr. Senator Chair. Senator Tidegui, stop. I really, you already spoken, of, okay? I'm speaking. But, but you're wrong. These amendments were here way before You're that. out of order, Senator Tidegui. I'm speaking. You already made your comments. Practice one, DDD, na position, No, no, no. I'm calling you, Kinabu. Anyway, moving along. I ask that everyone would take a look at it. I've asked the clerks at my office staff, take a look at it, and whatever amendments were there that were put or put in as recommended by my staff to the senators. And it was put in the wrong chapter. And I've asked them to scrub it, and the clerk to scrub it, and to take a look at it, and let's put it in the proper chapters. That's what I directed. You raised an objection on that. Now, if anyone, if, if, if we need to go to a vote to just make sure we place things in order, then we'll, place, well, then we'll call for the order. And, and if your intent is to overrule, if your intent is to overrule, which you objected already to what I'm ruling, what then we'll put it to the vote, and then we move from there. Speaker, do you have any comments? Yeah, point you want of to order, just uh, are you ruling then that that it is uh, in order to put amendments into this chapter now after the chapter has begun? Because that's contrary to your earlier rule. That's correct. As, as it was determined that it was placed in the wrong chapter, all we're doing is putting it in the proper place as it was discovered. I wish it was discovered a lot earlier. Uh, point of information, wasn't. Mr. Chair. So, so with that, uh, Speaker? Point, point of information, well, I'm clarifying what, information. what you're ruling on, because your ruling is pretty much reversing the earlier rule. Right. So we can now submit amendments to this chapter right now. Mr. I mean, you're Mr. changing Chair. the rule that said we have to submit our amendments prior. Mr. Chair, on the point of information, please. Yes, Madam No, Madam that's Vice. a point of order. And yeah, I'm, I'm trying to clarify the ruling as okay. well. Okay, point of information, speak, just, Vice Speaker. Just based on the discussion, Mr. Chair, I do know <laughs> that we are in chapter 11. 11, 12, and 13 are the only chapters in. And if I'm not mistaken, some of the provisions were in those chapters that had to be moved 
Am I ask, so it's a point of information or inquiry. Are we saying that th those amendments were scrubbed from those chapters? Because that's what we're on, 11, that, 12, and 13. That's so I what, just want to make sure. That was what I stated. Okay, was thank you. Things were on chapter 12 that should have been on 11. Thank you. It was discovered we need to put it in the right chapter. That's, Not to open the door as requested and, and asked earlier. That's why I'm making that okay. clarification, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much. All right. Thank you, Vice Speaker. Point of information, Mr. Chair. Point Go of information. It. These amendments has been put, have been put into that particular chapter since last week. Last yes. week. And, and, so okay. these amendments knew it was not supposed to be in there. Now they want to put it into this chapter. And as far as the, the one for the $5 million for the hospital, Mr. Chair, I, I don't see it in front of you. It was here. That's a brand new amendment. It wasn't even in the last chapter. It's a brand new amendment. Thank you for your comments. Are, are you done commenting so that we can move on? Because you're not the only one that needs to speak. Senator Perez, you had your hand up before I asked Senator Nelson to speak. Yeah, I also want to point out that fact that the, some of these amendments were brand new. They did not exist in the, in the later chapters. They weren't in the, what was it? They're brand new. They weren't yeah. in the latter, they're they not in, in chapter the later 12. Chapters, it's new today. So, um, that's the point I want to make, and if, okay. if you're making a decision to accept these amendments, then we need to... If, uh, I, I only open the door from Chapter 12 to get back 13. into the proper... That's all I open the door for, not for new ones. If it's a new one, I will be advised by these the clerk. These are new ones. Hold on there, Speaker. Okay, hold on. Welcome, I can do so. When you speak, I try to keep quiet. Yeah. Can we confirm okay. with the clerks? Let's, let's, let's take a recess at this time. Thank you.
<laughs> Committee all is called back to order. My colleagues, all the provisions or amendments that were made on 12 that was put back in 11 to make the correction are now being restored back to 12 so we can move on and we'll close chapter 11. Is there anything else? There is nothing else on chapter 11. So everything else that was, the intent was to bring it to 11, we'll go back to 12 and we'll entertain it on 12. Hope we all understand that. Chapter 11 is now closed. We will recess and come back at 2 and start with chapter 12. Thank you.